Hi everyone, thanks for being here. Aaron is rapidly intensifying, going from a Category 1 hurricane to a Category 4 in about 24 hours, with winds topping 145 miles per hour. In this video, I'm going to map out the new track and the impacts from the East Coast, from Florida all the way up through New York. Folks, this thing needs to be watched closely. Uh, from monster waves and rip currents to a chance for some strong winds, let's break down what you need to know here. Plus, uh, there's even the potential for a secondary system. In fact, uh, NOAA highlighting that potential uh, deeper into the main development region. We've got to watch that area for a possibility of a very similar Aaron like system, a long track when it goes all the way across the Atlantic. So folks, please, if you will, let me know in the comment section where you're watching from. Like this video right now. Subscribe to my channel for updates and turn on notifications throughout hurricane season. I break down threats and I give you an early warning. That's my thing. I do not hype. I tell you when it's time to be concerned when it's not. I do cover every side of the storm, every angle, every change, every track. Folks, that is not hype. That is me staying on top of it. So if you appreciate that, uh, stay here. This is not for everybody. I can totally get that. You don't need a breakdown of the storm that's not going to make landfall in the United States. But to me, uh, when I have family that's along the coast, I want to know what this thing's doing, what the trends are going, and how this could impact. Because folks, I have been doing meteorology for 20 years. 20 years on TV, broadcasting uh, in the Carolinas, Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. And here's what I can tell you. Storms do not go according to plan all the time. So many of these storms have been forecast to turn and they either do so late or they don't at all. So we need to watch this. I am hopeful this is going to turn out to sea and be hundreds of miles offshore. Does that mean we're immune from impacts? No. And I'm going to break down this video what that means. You can already see uh, Aaron undergoing some of that intensification as my satellite catches up. There you go. Do you see that? I mean, this system is already off to the races. Let me show you first the model ensemble. It's called the super ensemble. This is what I like to use when we're steadily forecasting something because it combines all of our computing power of, of all the powerful computer models. You got the GFS, the Euro, and the UK. The GFS is the farthest to the east near Bermuda. The European is the farthest to the west, kind of in the the middle. Thankfully, all of them are east of the United States, but close enough that we will still get some impacts. There are some clues as we look at each individual model, but thankfully, as we look at the multiple models here, uh, where it's going and how it's been, uh, you know, trending, it's definitely been on the southern side of the envelope of the models. No doubt about that. Uh, the X's represent where Aaron has been and uh, the ensemble suite as to where they were, were set to go. So it's certainly been on the southern side, but nonetheless, here's the path that the models or the average of them want to take this. Here's the latest tropical only models. This is, uh, you know, basically models that are run specifically for tropical guidance. And as you can see, uh, the majority of them do curve this out, but close enough that we'll get some impacts up and down the eastern seaboard. Let me unpack it for you. Here's the European model uh, placing this thing real well, rapidly intensifying tonight through the day on Saturday. Uh, and then getting close to Turks and Caicos and then making that turn to the north safely offshore. But again, close enough that this monster generates some crazy waves, uh, some big time dangerous rip currents, folks. It's just not safe to be in the water this weekend. I mean, it is it is a number two or three killer some years of weather related deaths. I mean, it is rip currents are no joke. Um, and when you have a storm system of this kind of power, it just cranks up the ocean. The waves are just powerful and even the strongest of swimmers can sometimes be compromised in rip currents. So uh, don't let that be you or somebody you love. Please let them know that. And again, let me know where you're watching from. Where along the eastern seaboard of the island chain are you watching from? Because I know you're out there and that means so much that many of you are watching from all over the world right now. Um, so there you have it with Euro. We'll get to the secondary threat in just a moment. Let's look closer at uh, the European with the wind speeds. Here we go. Uh, new European takes this thing close to the islands. I'll zoom into the islands in just a moment. Look at this buzzsaw, folks. Man, oh man. Wow. What a storm. So there's the eye. There's where the significant winds are. Hundreds of miles from Myrtle Beach, hundreds of miles from Cape Hatteras. But because it's so close to Cape Hatteras, you know, you got 30, 35 mile per hour wind speeds. Uh, those gusts, let me show you the wind gust swath. Is when gusts get up to 40 miles per hour. So you do get some pretty good winds along the Outer Banks, but because 
they're on the drier side, uh, the the west side of this storm system, there will likely not be a lot of flooding rains with this. So uh, you'll get some wind on the back side of this, but nothing that much, okay? Here's a, a broader view of that. Look at that. I mean, that is a monster storm. Thankfully, we're nowhere near it. But that's, this illustration also shows exactly why the track is important. Any deviation to the west would send some of those more violent colors to the west, closer to shore. We still have some room for error, just not a lot. Um, if this thing shifts 50, 60 miles, we could probably handle that. 100 miles, we can't. Yeah, that, that would bring in some of those big winds on shore, which uh, we do not want. Uh, so let's first get into the islands. Uh, Lesser Antilles, you're 24 hours out. And within the next 24 hours, you're getting 35, 40 mile per hour winds, and you will get some rain. Um, as we look closer at the island chain here uh, from St. Martin to the north, a solid inch to two inches. Now it does come down heavy and all at once, so you could have some flooding, some ponding in the roads, some street flooding. Same thing for Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, but the bigger rain, the bigger wind is going to be to the north as we look at the wind gust swath. Let's look at that uh, wind, surface wind, wind gust swath, where you at? There you are. You know, you're, 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 you're close. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're within 40 miles of some significant wind, and the waves here are just going to be uh, really churning up, really, really churning up. In fact, um, as we look at the waves, that's one of the, the concerns here is that as the storm system goes by, uh, it's got so much power with it that it could really turn up the, the waves in this area uh, as we go throughout the next 24 hours or so. Uh, so let's pull that model back up, show you that. This is the wave height model from the GFS. Uh, you're talking breakers up to 10 feet for the northern side of the islands here. Um, especially the U.S. Virgin Islands, you're in the yellows there. So we're talking 10, 12 foot high waves. Uh, just offshore of you, you get in those oranges and reds, 15, 20 foot waves. Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, you know, seven to nine foot waves. That's when it's starting to pull away. Uh, but these waves are significant. And look at this, folks, just offshore of Cape Hatteras. This GFS model has wave heights that are 17 to 20 feet. And deeper out here into the ocean, on this eastern eye wall, we're talking 45 to 55 foot waves. I've seen a wave height as high as 75 feet on the GFS model here. Now that's insane. That that is just that's just hard to even fathom. This does go up toward the mid-Atlantic. Um, thankfully, it's starting to curve away, so that does lower the threat for Washington D.C., uh, New York City, Boston. But even Boston gets in here at 40 mile per hour wind gusts. So you're, you're on that outer edge that you could get some really gusty winds. But impacts as far as direct rain, not looking likely. Uh, but the, the, the ocean will be turned up. There'll be some significant waves um, up toward New England as well. I mean, we're talking 10, 15 foot waves just offshore. All right. Uh, rainfall totals. Again, the rain, the heaviest of this is going to be just offshore. We really won't get any rain here for the Outer Banks, Myrtle Beach, up through the north. In fact, it's going to be a great beach weekend, going to be a great beach week, but just knee deep at best, folks, with those kiddos. Do not let the kiddos out in this kind of water. Uh, as far as the wind gust swath for uh, New England here, I mean, you see it come in just offshore. And again, any, any deviation from the models, 12Z run was a little closer, 6Zs like that. Zero Z was like that, 18 Z even further. So you get the picture. Uh, European ensembles in pretty good agreement uh, with kind of that, that turn right in here. So it does alleviate some of the threat for this thing riding right up the coast uh, to the mid-Atlantic into New England. You'll certainly have some impacts, but as far as some of those models we showed earlier this week where it kind of goes up maybe to Nova Scotia or Maine, those threats are a little lower. Who's watching there for now? Hello, thank you for tuning in. Um, those threats do appear to be a little lower now with that, but again, something to, to keep an eye on. All right, let's look at the GFS ensembles, almost identical to the Euro, which is really phenomenal. I love the model consistency here, uh, GFS right there. All right, so let's look at the GFS model. It bumbles this thing to the west. I mean, a monster, 945, 935. Cat 4, you know, we're, we're within 10 miles per hour away of being a Cat 5. I mean, this thing could very well reach Cat 4 
definitely Cat 4 status, but Cat 5, that'd be hard to come by, but if we did, that would be, that'd be something. Uh, definitely not out of the question. And you already see it there. Next Thursday, a little something, something trying to crop up. Talk more about that guy right now. All right, here we go. Secondary system. Do we have one? Well, Noah's been highlighting this area as a hotspot. This is actually exactly where Aaron formed. Aaron was maybe a little bit closer to the African coast, but uh, here we are with another highlighted area that we have to keep an eye on in that main development region. Does something form here and move to the west? Well, the models are saying, yeah. Let me show you both of our reliable computer models. Let's not mistake what's Aaron. Aaron is that front and center storm system right there, no doubt about it. And then that moves on through. But as we get closer to the end of the month, unfortunately so for Labor Day weekend, many would have plans. I know, I know, I know. You know, we're not canceling anything. We're not freaking out about anything. But I do want to put it on your radar, so to speak, that we need to keep an eye on some activity as it looks like it's going to continue to be active toward the end of August. So the GFS model, the America model, does crop up a system here. It brings it to the west. Shows it going over the Turks and Caicos, much like our early model runs did for Aram, much like they did. They send it into Florida or Georgia. In this case, it goes right through Savannah, Georgia, Brunswick, Georgia, Jacksonville. Where are my Jacksonville people at? Where are my Florida people at? I know you're here. Where are my Brunswick people at? I know you're there. Uh, South Carolina, Tennessee, Western Carolinas. Don't love that. Don't love that at all. Uh, that wind gust swath would uh, not be a friendly one. as uh, Aaron would take a track like that, but this new one will go inland like that. Wouldn't love that. So let's see about the 12Z. It had a similar storm system, but tracked it right here. Did the 6Z have a storm? It did. More Florida. And then the 0Z last night did not have a storm. Okay, so there's something, there's a, there's a something. Let's look at the European. Here's the European deterministic model run. Aaron first. You see Aaron curling up right there, going away. See the lower pressure in its wake right here. So the Euro has something to Thursday, Friday of next week. Never really develops anything. All the way through, nothing on that European model run. Let's look at the wind gust swath. That was a neat way to see it. I do like that. So easy way to look at the threats right there. There goes Aaron, clearly identified on the European model. Let's go one run back. There's Aaron. Let's go two runs back. Do we have a secondary system? No, we don't. How about the Euro AI? We don't get our pretty little wind uh, swath, so let's look at the surface pressures. Let's back it up. All right, here comes Aaron. You got a lower pressure in its wake. It does a Bermuda run. So Euro AI not buying that secondary system either. How about the 12Z run? Let's back that up. So Aaron's coming like that. Got a little low pressure system. It scoots it out. It scoots it away. All right. Let's go one more run back. Yes, it does. All right, so you got Aaron going away. Little secondary system right there. It develops as a thousand. Does a very Aaron like track. Bermuda. Bermuda back in the cards with that one. So there's something there. There's, there's a pattern recognition. And folks, just like with Aaron, a week ago we were talking about it, um, which I know can be tiresome. Um, I'd encourage you to keep checking back in, but, but make sure you don't get yourself worked up. That's the key here, folks. Um, my job is to prepare you, not to scare you. And, and sometimes when I give you so much information, sometimes uh, a lot of people get ticked about that. I don't need all this information. Well, that's the point of following this channel. If you want that kind of information, follow this channel. But my deal is you got to take it responsibly. You, you, you got you to gotta take it in strides, folks. And my, my goal is to always walk you through that. I, I'm always trying to get better at that. So um, full transparency. Um, when I see something, I'm going to say something. I'm going to let you know about it. But I always want to keep reminding you that, hey, this very well may not be something. Could it? Yes. We're going to be watching it for you. Uh, you know, Just kind of a steady, measured approach is, is my goal with it. Aaron gave you an early warning of that a week and a half, two weeks ago. That, hey, there's a pattern. It's favorable. 
now there's a storm. It's recognizing all the computer models. Let's keep tracking it. And now here we have a storm system. Thankfully, it's going to curve away from the United States, but we know those things uh, can be so dangerous. So my goal is to keep you posted, simply put. Don't mean to get on a soapbox here, but I do want you to know that that's something that uh, I always aim to do, and I uh, hope you appreciate that kind of forecasting. So again, please, if you don't follow this channel, go ahead and subscribe, turn on notifications, like this video, and uh, let me know in the comment section where you're watching from right now. A full suite of models, new hurricane data, the hunters are flying around in this thing, which feeds those models. I can't tell you how critical that data is for our models to be able to run off of. Uh, we'll have that, and I'll have it for you tomorrow and through the weekend as this thing needs to make its turn. We need it to make its turn. So uh, we'll wait for it to do that. And folks, any signs that it's not or doing something different, you'll hear about it right here first. Have a good uh, rest of your day, and we'll talk soon.